Hello everybody, I'm Mr. Jude and I'm Otto Abanet. Today, I'm going to show you how to do 3G quality analysis, okay? Um, 2G quality is RS call, 3G is tech note, 4G RSCP or SINR. I'm going to lay more emphasis on 3G quality, okay? And this video is going to be made as fast as possible because, I mean, the last time I did coverage, I was told the, the file is so large and a lot of time was taken so as much as possible i'm going to minimize my time and then discuss everything i'm supposed to discuss first of all i want to say what are the, what is the difference between quality and strength there's a clear difference between the quality and strength like in 3g you say rsrp rscp uh, for signal strength and for quality you'll be talking about like, you know, what's the difference sometimes you could have full bars in your phone there's a clear way to a layman way of understanding this you have full bars in your phone but you cannot make a good quality call when you're making call you'll be hearing some noise within the background and let me say something like water was poured into your call that's quality but when you have less bar let's say the, you have only one bar you're talking about strength so strength is basically the power at which the you are getting your signal so if you're very close to your site you're going to have a very good strength but you could have a very strong signal strength but the quality is bad you can't make good call you can't do anything proper okay so quality is a is different from strength and so what we want to deliberate on more more today on is quality if you've not have done strength before there's coverage analysis and you can always go to my youtube channel uh stasia balance solution and then you check it out here how to carry out 2g 3g for logic coverage analysis but today i'm going to be cons uh, laying emphasis on 3g quality analysis okay um these are points that you have to consider when you're doing your 3g quality analysis like you have pilot pollution missing neighbor and the rest of it and in this very um uh, video i'm going to show you how to use this point to capture those cases where you have these reasons as a result of your poor quality I have a sample report I've done here before where I analyze different, you can see different, different patches where you have poor, poor echno, poor, poor quality. Red patch, of course, as you can see here, signifies very poor quality, okay? And so the first thing I'm going to pick up here is the pilot pollution case. Sometimes, for instance, what we have on this report, you can see that the signal quality here is very bad. On 3g okay and when you play the log file on your terms investigation again if you don't know how to play logs on intense investigation go to my youtube former youtube videos you will see from if you click various positions here you will see that the there are so many salts here that are reaching this very point at a very good seepage rscp that's the strength is very very strong that's number one thing you have to consider before you say it's a pilot pollution. So many cells are, are having influence at this location with a very good coverage. But all their echo is bad. Okay? So what well, that shows that because they have so many strengths, there's a lot of clash. 3G network is made in a way that a maximum of three cells could be on their a, a active set. And other monitor cells and decoder sets that you're going to have might not necessarily um, are not going to be in the active set but they are not needed to have the same strength with those in the active set so when you have a situation whereby your monitored neighbors or your detected uh, uh, neighbor is detected neighbor is having very strong RSCP then you're going to suspect a pilot pollution now you go to check which cell is the active the serving cell this is the service cell, okay? Edge is 0931X is the service cell. Then what is the next monitored neighbor? What's the value of the RSCP? It's next 72. So plus or minus the service cell and the cell that is on the monitored neighbor, if it is within neck 5 dBm, well, then you know that this is a pilot pollution case. So for instance, if this is at neck 90, this is not neck 80, this and you know like 90 plus or minus next 73 is going to give you 
something greater than neck 5 okay maybe neck 20 or whatever then that is not a position case but this is a clear position case so you can see from this that there are so many cells having strong influence at this location now you are going to suggest a down tilt for some cells but for you to decide a down tilt you don't just have to say down tilt the guy that is on the mn here okay take consideration of distance take consideration of location and distance for instance i have 727 727 is very very close to this location so i don't need to down tilt it okay what about 931 931 is this place okay what about 783 783 is at this location so if i should down tilt anybody i can decide to down tilt 783 all right if i want i can also decide to down tilt 931 so that this very cell will cover this location already i have nothing to lose since the signal strength is very very okay at this location so when you down tilt these other cells have an influence far cells having influence at that location you're going to allow the self closest to it to have stronger influence and have dominance okay that's how to analyze uh, pilot pollution you can also do this on term discovery but i mean you can go to this place and then um under this pilot analysis you could display locations where you have pilot pollution all right so next let's talk about uh missing neighbor there's another thing. One thing with this neighbor is, okay, cell is serving you at this location. There's always set parameters for network that, okay, when you're getting bad, when your ECNO is getting bad, your RSCP is getting bad, you need to do a handover to another cell. But if a cell is holding on to a, a, very, a, um, a call for a very long time without handing over to the next cell, and probably the next cell is on the detected neighbor, all right? maybe it's not a configured neighbor to that very cell so mm -hmm. it's not going to hand over so looking at this diagram you can see 99 is 99p is serving this location while 95n next to it have a very strong very good ECNO very good RSCP but there's no handover going on all right so you're going to ask why is it not handing over to it and why is it seeing it as a dead neighbor rather than monitored neighbor okay even with this good strength you expect that there should be a handover but it's not happening okay so that could be as a result of missing neighbor but you for you to confirm this you can go and uh play uh, your, your of course i've done a lot about terms investigation where you can display from your signal events and when the events are out you'll be able to see um locations where you'll be able to see from what you play cases of missing neighbor like i have a case here whereby if you enlarge this, you can see missing WCDMA intra neighbor, uh, intra frequency neighbor. So you got to double click this and then read all the detailed information to tell you exactly which of the cell. Like we've always done, we say, for ECNO, for ECNO load because missing neighbor was detected. So you add the guy as a neighbor to this. What this is going to help is once the cover, cover, ECNO is getting bad. That's going to be a handover to the next cell. All right. You can also see your missing neighbor from this location. For instance, if I come to term discovery and I display, um, this is a typical cell with very poor ECMO. Okay. It is, oh, this, uh, mini. Sorry. You can display, I want to display the individual uh, logs. Okay. This is a log file with case of missing neighbor so you can easily come to this place like i've to told you in uh, this um pilot pollution you can uh, expand this come to terms collector events and check your metrics to see where you have this is missing neighbor alert so you can see at this location of course with this you just suspect there's a missing neighbor around here okay clicking on this you if you want to check the log name you can check the log name from point details you can check out a, how to maneuver all this from my videos okay so this is a missing neighbor case all right playing this log file on your terms investigation you can check it out a typical example of what i've given here whereby you could see that a cell has a very good coverage very good ECMO, but handover is not happening so that's missing neighbor case all right all right let's talk about um what's next what's next 
um, poor coverage. Of course, I've done analysis on poor coverage. Whenever there is a poor coverage at a location, there is a high cases of having poor quality. Okay, both of them goes together most times. So if you anything you can do to analyze poor coverage, for instance, um, let me check uh, check it out here. Oh, boy. Yeah. This is poor coverage, non-dominance. Okay. Okay. Let me just talk about this. All right. So you can see at this location, this site, there is an outage on this site. Coverage is very, very bad. It is a neg 90. All right. Although it looks a bit fake, but it's not really okay. Then ECMO is bad. None of the cells around here has a very good coverage. And so it affected the ECMO. So what you need to do is to bring out the site. For instance, in this case, this site was out. Or whatever you need to do to treat coverage at that location, treat it. You're going to have a better ECMO. All right. So coverage is treating, treated. What about non-dominance? Non-dominance, the way the network is made is that, okay, at any particular location, the closest site, the closest cell should be dominant at that location. But if you have a case whereby all the cells at that location are having poor coverage, you just have to ask the closest site at that location, why is it not dominating with a very good coverage? All right? It doesn't have a good coverage. That's why the ECMO is affected. So this is a case of non-dominance. In that case, you have to, you can advise an audit on this site to discover the electrical tit of the antenna and possibly do antenna optit or azimuth change to dominate that location. Remember when you want to do azimuth change on any antenna, you have to take consideration of people living around the area. So you don't remove coverage where it's having people simply because you're chasing goods, you no, know, some other place that people are not living, okay? So when non-dominant has to do with the closest site, if it is not having poor coverage, before you call it non-dominant, check out the coverage. If the closest site is having good coverage, that is dominance. Okay? All you need to do is to down to those that are having influence there to have good quality. But when the closest site to that location does not have good coverage, then you know it's not dominating that area. Your best bet is to make this coverage good here and you're possibly going to have a very good ECMO. All right. Now we talk about hardware fault and swap sector. This is always happens a case whereby very close or even under a site, the ECMO is very bad. You've got to suspect this. Of course, sometimes when you have a log you're analyzing and um, you don't have access to the back end, you might not be able to pull out data on this. But right, like what we have here is a transmission issue. This very site have a packet loss issue within the time they are doing this drive. You can see the packet loss going very very high so under the side the ECMO is very bad okay so it could be RRU problem DUW DUW problem or any other uh, hardware on the site but if you're very very close to the site and the site is up but the ECMO is very bad you could suspect that a hardware fault is actually the problem all right we also have case of swap sector if the sector is swapped then it could affect uh, quality also so to check swap i've already done with video on that you can easily go to my youtube channel and check out how to check swap on um terms discovery so you could see if the cell at that location is having a swap case the best bet is to treat the swap when you treat the swap then your ECMO is going to be better all right okay so next is cell overshooting if you check this very diagram here you discover that okay you have three cells having strong RSCP here but we are not calling this a pilot pollution because there is no fault MN cell which are going to check plus or minus to see if you can actually regard this as a pilot pollution so these three active cells are expected to have strong strength fine but the ECMO is bad so looking at what's happening here this is the closest cell to this location that's LG 444R um, if you don't understand 444R or cells with this, this multi sector cells, okay? So, sorted sites, sorry. So, everybody have GHJ, QRS, and the rest of them, okay? So, this is the closest cell to this location, but it is not actually the serving cell because Nitri 1 has a stronger influence at 79 dB. It is the one that is serving 
Right down the closest cell, seven and neg eighty four. But this is neg seventy nine neg eighty four are good strength. But because this is a better strength, it's serving from that location. So this is a case of overshooting because from this location to this location, you can down tilt it and allow cells within this location to be in the active cell. All right. So resource congestion is something you cannot see from your analysis, but actually when power is congested, good or uh, um, channel element is congested in the network there's bound to be some elements of poor quality okay if power is congested that means the resource is congested then quality is actually going to be degraded but this is not something we can see from this location from this uh, uh, drive test analysis that can be gotten by from the back end PSC clash when you display your PSC on the map okay when you display your PSC on the map um, and there's a what they call PSC class. There's a situation whereby two cells facing each other are having the same PSC. It's not an interference, okay? You can't call that interference. But that's actually a PSC clash. It can degrade quality of the network. That's if this cell and this cell have this less this one nine one, this one nine one. Okay? If both of them have the same uh PSC, there's bound to be poor quality that's PSC clash another point I forgot to add here is interference but in 3G interference cases is not really rampant like when we work we have in 2G okay but this is a broadband signal so you can see interference but if you have interference let's say from external sources external interference from a different network having the same frequency then quality is bound to be uh, degraded all right so these are different points you can always ponder whenever you are doing quality analysis and if you have any question you can easily ask me please don't forget to follow us on all these social media or call my number if you have any question um don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel all right so for every video i'm bringing in you'll be able to have it don't forget to click subscribe okay click the subscribe button and then subscribe to my channel all right so that whenever i post a video you will be in a position to see the video all right that's about what we can discuss now we are going to do more videos so those of you who do call and say you want to support what we are doing in terms of donation this is the account details all right and i've said this already all right thank you bye bye